I focus on what I'm here to give. And this is not just me, this is other successful people because what happens when you focus on what you came here to give? Well, then you automatically get rewarded. You automatically get rewarded. I say that every time I think. I think they're all special. They're all special to me. So, I mean, today is a special episode. And today we're going to talk about not you. <laughs> today we're going to talk about not you. Matter of fact, I'm going to post that. What up? What up, gang? How you living, baby? I hope you guys are living your life. Well, living and loving. You know, I was thinking about that yesterday, about how that's my little tagline. It's just been kind of my tagline now for a while. You know, it's kind of like every little YouTuber or something has a little thing they say. And somewhere along the line, I picked that up. But I love it, you know what I mean? I really do, I love it. I think about that all the time. Like, what does it mean to live and love your life, you know? Uh, and you're like, well, obviously I have to live it. But that's not necessarily true. I mean, you can exist. A lot of people are just existing. They're not actually living their life, you know? Uh, and I mean that, they're not living it with intention. You know, it's just like, you're kind of just like, floating through space, you know what I mean? So some people are just floating through space out here. But not the grind gang, man. We're living with intention and, uh, and we're loving our lives, you know what I mean? We're really enjoying the process, you know? Not only are we trying to live with intention and get things done and, and, and create something in the world for ourselves and for others, but uh, we're also trying to appreciate the grind, you know? It's a process, it's a, a daily action, you know? It's things that we have to do day in and day out and we want to not be ground down by that process necessarily. We want to enjoy it. And so that's why I say I hope you're living and also loving your life. So it all works. What's up, gang? Yep, a robot life. You got to stay away from those. You got to stay away from those robot lives. And a lot of people, it's, it's easy to do it, you know? If you have not uh, trained yourself to think about your actions and your thoughts and your feelings with a conscious decision-making process, then you end up just doing it on autopilot. And so a lot of us, you know, live a life on autopilot, but not this show, not the grind gang. That's not what we about here, right? And so today we're going to talk about a very interesting topic. Um, and, we're, and, and I said, it's not you, right? Today I want to talk about living a life of service. And now this isn't like a whole, um, I mean, it sounds like some like, I don't know how to explain, like churchy shit, you know, it's like, live a life of service to others. And I mean, so I'm not trying to really be altruistic here, right? This isn't an altruistic type thing. And I hope you guys understand that me, myself, am not altruistic. So I'm not like, um, like I don't do this just for you. Of course I do it for you, right? Like I love to help others, but I mean, I'm here for myself too. You know what I mean? Like we're all here for ourselves too. So I want to talk about that process, about when is it okay to be here for yourself and here for others and, and how that works and, and how I've come to understand that, right? And so, what's up, Maddie? What's up, Mikey? Casey, I love you guys. Thank you so much, man, for real. And so, um, let's hop into it, right? This is, again, not to be altruistic. This is not about being a good person. You guys know I don't really talk about that type of stuff in the sense of like, oh, you're, you're good today because you did X, Y, and Z, right? This is about being efficient in your own self, right? And, and, and in a way, taking care of yourself by taking care of others, you know? And I think that that's the, the shift in the focus or the shift in mindset, you know? So much of our lives are about us. We live our own life, you know what I mean? Like, so I live as Sherrod. So all day, every day, I'm looking from the lens of my own perspective, you know what I mean? My own life. And this is how... It is for all of us. You you don't know what it's like to be me. I don't know what it's like to be you. I don't know what it's like to be anybody else. I don't I've never experienced life as any other body except for my body and me and this spirit and this mind. And the and so it's natural, but at the same time we get so consumed with that, right? Remember I was talking when we first started about this about living your life consciously and with intention and and focused thought, right? Not just living on autopilot. Well, if you're living on autopilot, that's what you do. You're, it's all about you. And it has to be because you don't understand anything outside yourself. But when you really start to work on yourself and you start to try and understand more about the universe and life and, and how this is all interconnected and working together and, and how we're all here on this one planet and, and every human is the same. We talked about the law of divine oneness plenty of times. Um, 
But as you start to get these understandings, you realize that it, it isn't really about you. You know, um, you, and I talked about this a little bit in the last live, are us, all of us, are little drops of water. You know, we're, we're, we're atoms. We are uh, grains of sand. And together we make up the beach. You know, I said in my last live, I said every single drop of water makes the ocean. And that's true, right? Um, you cannot remove one without removing essentially another one. And then after you remove them all, there is no ocean left. So the, the idea here is that we're all interconnected. And what I do today not only affects me, but it affects the entire whole of the universe, right? Even if I can't see how that happens, it's like a, a ripple on a pond, you know? You throw a rock out into a still pond and it creates this ripple and that ripple can go on for whoever knows how long, right? It kind of depends on how big the splash was, right? But it, it, it affects the whole lake. It doesn't affect just the one little spot where that, that rock fell, right? Um, that kind of creates a butterfly effect all the way through time and space and energy. So every time you say something or do something or act or move or whatever, it's not for not, you know what I mean? Like it's not, people act like, that's why I get so excited about my day to days, right? I was just doing a story, I, I hope everybody watches my stories, I love y'all so much. Um, in my stories, I was, I, was, I was just working out and I was kind of poking fun of my cousin and I was acting like I was beating, or my cousin, my nephew, I was acting like I was beating him at something, but I was just working out. And I started thinking about how in my mind, that's how it works for me. That's why I get so, it's like, I love this shit. Today, I might as well be talking to 10,000 people, even just you eight people on this live. To me, it's the same. Everything that I do, I think of it as the, the most important thing I could do, right? Like for me, like there is, some people think, well, oh, I'll turn on my championship mindset when the championship is on pawn. You know, a champion plays like a champion in practice, when they go home, like all the time. If you have a champion's mindset, right, you are a champion always in everything that you do. I say the way you do one thing is the way you do all things. It's very, if, if the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. And so, um, you know, I've, I've spent a lot of time and I try and understand that these are not just day to day actions. This is the work. This is it. Today, there's no big grandstand. Nobody's shooting fireworks off for me. You know, I'm not winning a Grammy or nothing. You know, I'm not doing like this the thing that we all wait for to start celebrating or appreciating. It's like when you get to the top, then it's fun and exciting. When you start making millions of dollars for what you're doing, then it's, then I'll try, or then I'll be really appreciative of the process or whatever, whatever, whatever. And, I, and you'll never make it there if you can't see how they're the same, right? If you can't see how it's the same talking in front of 10,000 people as it is talking to 10. If you can't talk to 10 people with a, uh, you know what I mean? Like if you can't do it well, then you're not going to be able to talk to 10,000 people well. And so you have to practice now, whatever you're doing, you're making beats or you're writing a book or you're dancing. Every time you do that, you have to approach it as if this is the show, you know, like this is it. And I think about that too. I say today I won. I said swish at when I just did one rep. But to me, that was it. It was about winning the whole game in that one action. Um, Thank you for explaining this, your explanation of POV. Oh, thanks. I love that. I hope, I hope, I hope to do that for everybody. And you know, uh, when I think about what I'm trying to do out here, all I try to do is get you guys to think about something differently, period. Like, I, that's all I care about, really. Honestly, I'm not even like, I don't care if you like what I'm saying or if you take what I'm saying or any, like, it does not matter to me. My whole, I look at my whole job in life is to just plant these seeds to just put these ideas out there in hopes that somebody takes them and it, and it changes a little bit about the way they view something. And in that, they can get some type of new epiphany or reach some type of new level of potential for themselves or to unlock something within you um, by, like I said, changing your perspective a little bit. So if that's happening for you today or has ever happened, I appreciate you and I'm so excited for you and me. So today, I want to talk about that though, right? It's all connected. Everything is the same and, and, and what you're doing, it matters on a grand scale, all that stuff, right? So um, I was just laughing because, like I said, when, what, what, the way you do one thing is the way you do all things. And so we we're talking about that. But selfless service though, right? Too many times people get caught up in this idea of only yourself, right? In like what you get from the thing. 
So why do people not like to show out in practice? Why don't we go as hard as we possibly can in practice? Why don't we treat practice as it is the championship? Well, that's because there's no glory in it. Like I said, nobody even sees you do it. Nobody's there clapping and hooraying. You don't get no awards. There's no trophies. There's no money. There's, there's no, nothing that comes to you externally that gives you some type of stimulus that says, hooray! It doesn't, it doesn't, there's nothing. Nobody gave a fuck that I worked out today. Nobody, except for me, of course. But I mean, and I'm gonna get to that point, but outside, externally, nobody gave a fuck, okay? But, and I'm not, I, I, I'm not training for any type of, you know I mean? I just do it because it's fun and a healthy lifestyle. But if I was training for something, um, if I thought about that, if it was only about what I get and how, and about me, right? Um, then you don't go hard in practice. You don't want to win on the little things. You don't want to try hard unless there's some type of, oh, I'm going to make a million dollars for this, or I'm going to get, you know, people are going to think I'm so cool if I do this. And that's why a lot of people don't start. I see a lot of people and they're like, man, I've been doing this for two years, man, and three years, and I still only get 200 views on my fucking, so, 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 who gives a flying fuck? What is that? externality of what you get in return have anything to do with what you're doing. And this is what I want us to understand, right? When I'm talking about this idea of service and selfless service and not focusing on yourself, right? There's two, the law of polarity, there's two energies that are always happening simultaneously in life. And for you too. And there's what you get, right? What you get from life. I get fun. I get pleasure. I get money. I get fame, whatever, attention, right? I get love. These things that you get and they come, you receive from the universe, from me, from others. You receive intelligence, you receive wisdom, you receive all types, everything, right? Life is interconnected. So we're constantly, somebody said, I fucking love your energy. I love you too, thank you. Um, is we're transferring energy, so constantly, always. Somebody's always trying to give you their bullshit and you're always trying to get something from somebody else, you know, and this is constant. Why you want friends? You know, why you got to go to work? Why, why you do anything at all? Why even get out of bed? Well, because of this natural process, right? You want to get things, <laughs> but you also have things that you have to give. And so when I look at people who are, who are successful, happy, enjoying the process, right? Those people tend to focus more on what they are giving than what they're getting. And this is what I mean by selfless service, okay? Today, in your life, I understand, all of us, that we are consumed, like, it is about us, right? It is about your feelings and your life and how happy you are today, right? You, that's a chief, our chief goal for all of ourselves is to make ourselves happy. And I get that. Uh, I understand that. And, and you guys have heard me talk plenty of times on the show about how that is an important process for you to take care of yourself, right? And it is, and it's 100% is, but this is how you do that, <laughs> okay? This is the process and journey I've been on. After a while, let's look at, let's look at ourselves as an individual human being, right? Uh, outside of the interconnectedness of everything else, just you as a person. And I wanna dial back time real quick for about, let's take, Take it back a couple thousand years, okay? Before the iPhone, before the cars, before the houses, before the clothes, before the jewelry, before the vacations, before planes, all that stuff, right? Let's take it way, way, way back to, I like to go to Native American times. Let's say it's, it's pre-Columbus days here in America and we're in a tribe of some sort and we hunt and we gather and we live off the land. Um, let's, let's think about that life right now. In that, how much can you gather and get as one person, right? Like I said, when there is no um, external pleasure from getting things like, like cars and money and clothes and fame, there, none of that stuff exists yet. Um, how much of what, like what could you get? Like what could you get from life? You could get food, right? Obviously, so you can get buffaloes and, and whatever animals that you're hunting. And from that, you can get things like skins and tools and weapons and, and pots and stuff, like things you need, right? Tools. Uh, you can get food. You can get water. 
And then everything else, I guess, would be probably like, you know, emotional things like love and, and support and connection with your tribe or something like that or with the universe, right? But isn't it funny how you can't really amass anything? You can only eat so much food. Like you, once you're full, then you're full. And there's no, there is no more. Let me just keep eating. Oh, I'll get some more stuff for myself. Get, 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 right? You're full. Once you're full, that's it. it doesn't, you don't even want to look at food anymore. It's like there's nothing you can do to fill yourself up anymore with more food when you're full. When you look at water, you can only drink so much. It, it doesn't matter. It, dude, back then, what are you going to do? Carry around a six-gallon bucket of water on your back just in case for the future? You yourself can only fill yourself up with so much water. You can only fill yourself up with so much shit. Now, let's fast forward back to you know today's time. How much stuff can you fill your closet with? How many cars can you fill, or your garage can you fill your cars, cars can you fill your garage with? You know, stuff you can fill your house with. Infinite experiences that you can fill your life with, right? Vacations, trips, fancy restaurants. They're, they're in abundance everywhere. Millions and millions and millions of options of things that you can get, okay? Um, how overwhelming is that now, right? And it's no wonder that over this process of, of when, you, when you really were probably a little bit more connected to life and less the things, um, it was easy to get full. But now you fast forward to our time now where there's unlimited possibilities, unlimited things to get, and it's so hard to get full now, right? It, the full isn't about food anymore. You don't care about the food. Now it's about fancy food. And now it's about how nice, not just getting a car as a tool or something I need, but it's like, I want that because it'll make me feel X, Y, and Z or something, right? So we live in a society now where you can fall into the pit trap of always trying to get and that you'll never be satisfied, right? You can never be satisfied by the amount of things that you get. And I'm talking about things right now, but I mean, like, let's be realistic here. Why do people keep buying the houses and keep buying the cars and keep buying the clothes. You always want more. Exactly, because those things do not satisfy. They do not satisfy. Even if you buy a Gucci purse thing today, what are you gonna want six months from now? You're not gonna give a fuck about it no more. It loses its value. This is natural human nature, right? We don't worship tools in, in a spiritual sense, right? It's just about its functionality. And when we lose the utilities, that's what they called it in economics. They usually actually used to try and measure this, how much utils you get out of something, meaning like how much utility you get out of using something. You know, there, cause there's some things you've bought in life that you, you use all the time. So like your cell phone, it never gets old to you, right? Like you love your cell phone for all the different ways and things you can use it for. So it has a lot of utils. But then there's other things that have very little, like, um, you know, a vacation to a, spe a specific uh, resort. It might be fun once, but twice, three times, four times, after a while it becomes kind of mundane. If you live there every day, you would, it would lose all the luster of a vacation, right? So inherently, this is all mirage and trickery that we're looking at out here, right? It's a bunch of dazzly things and shiny objects to keep your attention for a second, but then you're constantly trying to move on to the next shiny thing to give yourself some type of whatever, right? Some type of emotional response or some type of something. And this is where the getting mentality fucks you in today's day and age. Because if you're constantly focused on yourself and what you're getting, and what you get in return for what you're doing, right? Um, you're never gonna be satisfied. <laughs> you're gonna live a life of constant want, constant want, because there's a million things out here to want, guys, right? Like I said, there's a million cars out here to want, there's a million things to want and try and get for yourself. Now, this doesn't happen in just things, though. This happens in all types of situations. A lot of people finding unsatisfaction in their relationships. We've seen this from our divorce rate is up to like 60% now. So people had the hardest time staying in relationships for a long period of time. Why is that, do you think? I mean, obviously, you can probably speculate a little bit where I'm going to take it. But um, I think that's because of this um, focused on ourselves culture, right? Uh, a relationship is fun as long as you're 
getting all the things you want from it, right? So as long as you're getting the love and getting the attention and getting the the appreciation and getting the the Gucci Gucci good feeling from it, it's fun, right? And you want to be a part of it. Then it's like so great. And you're like, oh, I love this. This guy's the best. But what happens when it starts getting tricky? <laughs> what happens when it start when you start to get pain from the other person? Or what happens when you start to get uh, frustration from them? Or which are all natural human, you know, experiences. We all go through that type of stuff. But because you own, or not you, but people, you know, I don't know you, so I can't say you. So when every time I say you guys, just know I'm not talking to you, I'm talking to you, <laughs> thems, <laughs> us. I'm really talking to us. I mean, I'm talking to myself too. So I, I really should even stop saying you. I should start saying us because I'm 1000% talking to myself as well. But when you start to get those things from people, if you're, if we're somebody who only cares about our own experience, well, we say, well, this person isn't making me feel good anymore, so I don't want to be with them, you know, or this person isn't doing the things that I wanted them to do, you know, and so if they're not acting in the way that I want them to or giving to me in the things that, the things that I want to get from them, then I'm not in it anymore because that relationship is only surrounded or revolving around what you get. This mentality, this getting mentality, fucking people up left and right out here. And I see it all the time. Dude, I, it fucked me up out here. I just talked in the live, last live, about how I used to be so egoic and so um, vain, so like into me as like a thing and a person. And I might still come off like that to you now. I don't, I don't know, you know what I mean? Because I still very much appreciate myself. But I don't, I really don't care about me. I don't care about money. I don't care about fame or attention or any of that stuff. Um, it comes. It just comes naturally. And that's fine because it comes based on what you give. And I'm going to talk about that next. But, um, and that's fine. But I don't give a shit, right? I see a lot of people do. I see a lot of artists start to care so much about what they get from their art. Um, when you start to focus on what you get, and if you're always consumed with what you get, um, you're going to fuck yourself because, again, life is more about what you're here to give. And in return, from what you give, you get. Have you ever heard that? You give to get, right? The greatest gift is giving, right? It's so funny how like you can really get a lot from giving in the world. So let's, let's flip the whole script, right? If that's a getting mindset and a getter or somebody who's always focused on what they receive and how they feel and how the emotions that they're receiving from others and, and how I'm, I look and how I am, how... I, it's always about me and what I'm feeling and what everybody, you know, what I'm getting. If you're like that, um, let's talk about art, right? If you're making art or you're making anything and you're making it for money, right? A lot of people do. You see this a lot in business, right? When a business is geared towards what they get um, and they only produce and operate based on what they get. Do, they, do those people tend to make very good things? No, they do not. They tend to just cut corners. They tend to cheat. They tend to um, negate all the things that they're there to give. If you're focused, when we talked about this, focusing in that on like um, your day to days, are you going to grind? Are you going to come out here and do the hard work if you're only focused on how many views you get? Right? And so I switched that mindset. And a lot of people, like I said, who are successful have switched that mindset. And so every day I come on here, I've been doing this right here for four years, four fucking years, right? How many viewers do we have? How many followers do I have? How much money am I making? I don't even fucking know. Don't even care. I got like 1980. There's about 10 people in this live and I make about zero dollars. Okay. So why do I do it every day? Why do I do it every day? Well, because that's not where my mind's at, right? This is something I'm trying to do to give, right? It's a giving thing. And I focus on it from the giving point. Right? So every day when I come out on a live or something, I'm thinking, A, how do I help somebody? Right? How do I give my talents, my energy, my time, how do I give something, anything to the world? Right? And it doesn't have to be, this isn't about money, guys. This is not about money. Okay? So don't think, all right, well, Rob was telling me I got to give more, so I'm going to go out here and give the homeless people my money. It's not about that. It's not, it really isn't. It's about a mindset of giving. Of, 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 of what I'm here to produce, 
what I'm here to make, what, how I'm here to make you feel, how I'm here to be a father to my child or a brother to my brother or a husband to my wife. It's not all about how my wife is being to me or how my job is being to me. I see that a lot too in work, right? A lot of people don't only do the bare minimum for work. Why? Because they only care about what they get. They only care about their paycheck. And if you only care about your paycheck, then you're only going to do what it takes to get your paycheck. And then you leave. And what happens for the rest of the team? What happens if you work somewhere where people do care about their jobs and other people? Then you have to pick up the slack for the other people who refuse to care about what they're doing and what they're giving, how they're doing their work and how like, right? We see this all the time. How come you're treating that person like shit? Well, because they're treating me like shit. Okay, so you're getting shit. And I understand that. And that sucks. You're getting shit. But now you have to also give shit in return? You don't, right? If you focus, if it's not about what you get, it's only about what you give. Well, then these things don't matter. Externalities start to melt away. I don't give a shit what kind of car I'm driving right now. Don't give a fuck. It's not about that for me. You know what I mean? Like... Dude, it's not about that for me. It's not about the money. It's not about the fancy clothes or the cars or any of that shit that really has zero fucking like weight in the world anyways. But we make it all about that. People make their whole lives about money. It's like money's paper. What is this? It's not. There's so little of importance in, in a spiritual sense, on a universal sense. Uh, sure, it has a lot of weight in physical reality, but that physical reality is just one of the realities here. There's a lot of reality happening out here besides just physical. But we get so consumed in this thing about what we're getting returned that we don't focus enough on what we're giving. So we don't come out and try our hardest, right? So focused on getting love from our partner in our relationships that we forget to give it. You know? We're, we're so focused on the fact that our partner's failing in our relationship, and so we don't notice how we start to fail in our relationship. And we start to give back in return to the things that we were getting. When, you're, when your partner, they start to give you that heartache and that pain and that frustration, right? What do they need in that time? They don't need your pain and frustration too. Right? So then now you, because you're so salty that they're giving you pain and frustration, you get that and so when you get that you you always think about everything in terms of what you're getting so if that's what you get then what do you want to do you want to give what you get because it's all about that but if you give based on your own like you're a giving person it doesn't matter what you get so if i get hate from you what am i going to give you in return i'm gonna give you love why how how is that possible rod how can you love people who hate you because i don't give a fuck about what you're giving me it's not about what I'm getting from you. I don't care if you understand me. I don't care if you like me. I don't care if I get your money. I don't care if, right? I focus on what I'm here to give. And this is not just me, this is other successful people because what happens when you focus on what you came here to give? Well, then you automatically get rewarded. You automatically get rewarded. It, aut it comes automatic. If you work, your ass off every day on the basketball skills that you came to give to the world, right? Not the money you're making in your contract, not whether or not you're, you're getting enough shoe sales or anything, but if you just focus on your game, you focus on your craft, you focus on the writing. I'm here to write, I'm a, I'm a writer. I'm here to write things and write books and write articles and stuff. If your focus constantly, oh, so the, nobody read that one. Oh, no, oh, man, what do people want me to write about? What is it? Uh, well, who's going to give me the most likes for whatever I write? You do that, we're going to run you in circles because we all like different things and we all want different things. And we're all trying to get something different from you. But instead, if you focus on what you're there to give, this is my writing. This is how well I write. I want to practice everyday writing. I want to be, I want to write the best I can possibly, I can possibly write, right? Don't worry about what I'm going to think about your writing because that's what you're going to get from me, right? And if you focus on that, it's going to fuck you up. And I'm going to explain that here specifically. But you focus on what you came to give in that situation. You say, all right, it's not about me. It's about them. This, this writing is about helping somebody else. This writing is about inspiring somebody else. This writing is about teaching somebody else. This writing is about expressing myself to other people whatever it's about but it's about something that you want to give to the world and you focus on that and you train from that s standpoint and it doesn't matter if you get 10 likes or no likes 
if a hundred thousand people read it or no people read it, right? You're just focused on what you're trying to give. Well, over time, when you're focused that intently on your craft, what happens? You get fucking good, extremely good, so good that we can't help but fall in love with your writing. We can't help but be inspired. We can't help but think you're fucking the goat of all time because of the, the level at which you're excelling at that craft. But you only get to that level of excelling at that craft by focusing on the craft. You see this happen too many times where rookies come out and they say, oh, I'm the hot shit in the game. You know, I'm the baddest motherfucker there is. And it's not, and you get stomped out. And it's like, yo, you're not, you know, you, fuck that. Show us. Prove it. Focus on what you're there to give. Win. You know, like focus on the practice. Focus on the whatever. And let's take it out of just, out of just, um, the world and our jobs and stuff. It's in your relationships too, right? You want healthy, happy relationships. People are like, oh, I just want to be loved and I just want to be appreciated. Everybody, my favorite one, everybody wants to be understood. Everybody wants to be understood. Under, understand where I'm coming from. Understand why I'm the way I am. Understand why I did this and that. But we always want, want to be, we want to be interpreted and understood and, and appreciated and loved. Um, and we're so focused on that. Of what we get, right? What happens? You get frustrated. You get pissed off. You get sad. Because what we not do? We don't give you that shit. We don't give you none of that. We give you our pain and our frustration because we're also doing the same thing you're doing. Focusing on what we get. And we're not getting what we want. We're not getting the love and appreciation we want and the understanding we want. And so what do I give you? The lack of appreciation and understanding and love and all that. And so what do you give to somebody else or get? Because, you know, and it's this nasty, vicious cycle. Instead, we can be people who break that cycle and say, look, when, you're, when your partner is expressing to you, or lack of thereof, if you feel like you're not getting love and attention or whatever in your relationship, put it into your relationship. Why don't you be the one to put it in, right? If you're noticing there's a lack in a situation, put it in. I spend my whole time, my whole life now trying to understand you, trying to understand everybody. Why somebody do that? Why would you ever do this? What? I'm trying to understand myself, right? Fuck if you can understand me. How about I try and understand myself? And so I focused on me. I gave to myself. It's always about giving, right? Even if I need something, what do I do? I give it to myself. And that's why I say focus on yourself, right? But you can't focus on yourself and what you're getting because what you're going to get? Frustrated. You always think you deserve more than what you're getting. Trust me. Oh, I'll do. You're, you're always, you always think you're cooler than you are and you always think that you should be paid higher than you do and, and that every, and so-and-so shouldn't treat you like this and, and, and that shouldn't have happened to me in this way and blah, 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 blah. And it's so exhausting and it's so frustrating and it puts you at such a low vibration and it puts you in a place where you're constantly focused on the external world and what they're doing to you and who, what so-and-so said and so-and-so did and but that you never get to the effective place of what you're doing, what you're saying, how you're being. And if you believe in the law of attraction, right, it always comes back to that. What are you, what are you attracting? What you are. Right? Damn, bring it full circle, right? You're attracting what you are. And so if you're focused on your getting and you're frustrated because you're not getting and you're frustrated because you're not getting understood, then what are you attracting? Lack of understanding, frustration, lack of love, lack of appreciation. That's what you're attracting because that's what you're giving. Because you will get what you give. And so I come out every day knowing this, right? Remember I said I give to get. It's not, it's not, it's not, this is not altruistic. I, of course, I want you to get because I understand the process. So if I help you, you'll what? You'll help me. If I help you win today, what will you help me do tomorrow? You'll help me win. If I provide value to you in your life, if I provide information, wisdom, guidance, entertainment, love, a new cell phone that changes your life, if I give you anything of value, cool pair of shoes to put on your feet, anything, what are you going to give me in return? Money attention, appreciation, whatever the fuck, right? But if I only focused on that, would I ever make the good pair of shoes? Would I ever come out here and make myself into something that deserves the value in return? I won't. I would have just been too focused on what I'm not getting, which frustrates you. It, it, it robs you of your motivation. You know, remember I was talking about how I go hard every day in practice? Every workout, I go as hard as I possibly can. Every job I've ever had, I go hard as I possibly can. I don't know what you can give. I'm not concerned with it. 
when other people let me down in my relationships, which happens often, right? I don't blame them. I'm not worried. Like, you fuck it up. You fail. It was even in my one of my posts the other day. I said, look, people are going to fail me. That doesn't give me an excuse to fail myself, right? So if you guys aren't going to give to me, that's fine. That's fine, right? Then I'm going to give more. I'm going to do more. I'm going to rise to the challenge. I'm going to go harder. But every day when I'm practicing or when I'm going, I give myself validation. I give myself um, the showtime, the award. You know, in, I was just thinking about this today. I was like, you know, in my mind, I always win. I'm always winning. It doesn't even matter what I do. I'm like, when I'm making breakfast, I'm like, damn, you're the best fucking breakfast maker. You just won this breakfast. You're, just, you're a smash, man. You know, like, and this is my, I'm blessed to have this ridiculously healthy self-talk. This is, this is a, a blessing, and I, and I thank God daily for it, that I have this thing in me where I just like always like, Man, you're a badass, bro. Like, when I go to work out, like I said, I, to me, in my mind, that's the show. That's it. Like, I work hard because I'm like, yo, that's the, that's what I get in return. I get the satisfaction of knowing that I went hard as fuck. And over time, that adds up to being the best or to winning or to getting what I wanted to get out of life or to becoming what I wanted to become. But I got to focus on what I give. I got to focus on what I get. I got to focus. You... Looking at your mirror, looking in the mirror every day, focused on the results of your body. This happens too, right? We see this. Oh, well, I don't have a six pack or I don't look like him or her or I don't like this about myself and I don't like, and it's all about what you get from your body, right? How your body's giving to you. What have you given to your body lately? When's the last time you gave your body a workout? When's the last time you gave your body healthy food? Right? If we don't give to ourselves, but we don't, we don't, we don't give to ourselves, we don't give to our processes, and then we complain because we're not getting the results. And of course we're not getting the results. I mean, the law of cause and effect, right? Of course we're not getting it. Of course we're not getting the money. We're not practicing. We're not studying. We're not developing ourselves to get to the next level. We're not focused on what we're giving. And we, and we, and we complain. And we get frustrated and we get down on ourselves because if you focus on what you're getting, guys, most of us are getting suffering from life. Life, Buddhist said, life is suffering. And it is. There's a lot of pain out here. And there's a lot of frustration and a lot of distraction and a lot of what we talked about, things to consume, things to make you feel bad about yourself, things to all types of things out here. But if you focus on yourself, not in the self, like getting yourself and feeding yourself and getting yourself full and and you having fun today, right? Everybody's like, I want to have fun. I don't want to do anything. This sucks. This this is boring. This right? Why do you gotta get fun all the time? You don't. You don't have to get fun all. The time. Sometimes you can give hard work. Sometimes you say, you know what? I'm doing. I'm not doing this to get. When I sit down and do these, it's not about what I get. This is a giving thing. It's just, this is an hour of my day that I get. Trust me, I get throughout life too. There's times where I get. Somebody call me up and be like, yo, we want to take you on this and then we want this to happen. I think you're so cool and blah, blah, blah. But that all comes from what I've, I've been giving, right? A lot of people look up to me like, oh, you got to do all this cool stuff with Mod Son and you got to do all this cool stuff in LA. You went to New York with Tana Mojo and all this stuff. Never focused on any of that. Never, never hit up Tana Mojo and was like, please. Help me, give me, give me a shot. Give me an opportunity. Didn't, didn't, didn't do none of that. Didn't call nobody, didn't ask. Didn't, did not focus whatsoever on anybody else giving me a shot, me getting an opportunity, me getting a, a none of that. You know what I did? I focused on what I could give you. I said, hey, I can make you a badass video. Well, as a matter of fact, let me show you. Let me make you a badass video. Let me just give you a video. I'm not even gonna charge you. I'm just gonna make it. Here, gave you that. What happens in return? They appreciate that. They see the value in it. I didn't have to explain the value. I didn't have to tell you. You see it. It's there. It just gave it to you. You just got value. And you think, hey, we should have this guy around. This guy is valuable. And next thing you know, you're there. Right? But if you're so focused, I see people all the time so focused. Yo, sign me, bro. Can, can I get it? Bro, get me on, man. Get, get me. Get, get, get me. Get me. Get me a job. Get me over there. Get me one of those. Get me on. You know. Fuck you. What are you, what are you doing? What are you, what are you giving? Where, where are you being? So, so important, guys. 
I want to move it on to this. You're giving and you're, and you're getting, but you give to get, right? The better you give to the world, the more you're going to get. But ultimately, the last thing I want to leave y'all with is the six human basic needs. If you've never heard me talk about it before, I would love for you guys to study it. It's something I encourage everybody I coach to study. Um, it's a Tony Robbins thing. Tony Robbins talks about the six human basic needs. Tony Robbins, if you don't know anything about him, is my mentor. You know, not personal mentor. You can find mentors out here on the internet, guys. You know what I mean? Like reading books. If you read all of Karl Marx's books, um, Karl Marx can mentor you through that. You know, um, and this is with anything. So I'm mentoring you guys now, right? As through my content, my videos, and stuff, you're being mentored by me. So you almost feel like you know me. Same thing in the sense of Tony Robbins, right? Uh, I've watched all his stuff and I've studied everything that he's done. And so I, a lot of what I'm, I am is built on what he teaches. And one of the things that he taught me a long time ago that was, I was literally just gonna say, <laughs> I'm trying, oh, I'm trying, M, thank you. I, for real, that's like the greatest compliment everybody's ever given me. Um, Cause that is my hero, you know, and, and, I, and I do daily want to make that impact that he's making. But, um, you know, see, it's so funny. Listen how I talk about it. I, I'm not, oh, I can't wait to make the amount of money that Tony Robbins makes. <laughs> it's about, I want to give that level of impact to the world just like he does, right? Uh, you, you automatically get reciprocated the billions. You automatically get reciprocated the attention and the fame. That, that, that's automatic, right? If you, if you give a level of, of commitment and dedication and value to the world like Tony has, then you'll get in return all the things that he's gotten. So that's, that's whatever. Same thing. Give, give Michael Jordan level talent to the world and I guarantee you will give you Michael Jordan level adoration, right? So, um, it's all about what you get. But, he talks about the six human basic needs. And the four, the four, four first ones are about you. They're all about you. Um, you need, we need, every individual person needs these four things. You need security, right? You need to know that life's going to happen today. <laughs> you need to know that the floor is not just going to rip away from you completely, right? Like, if we lived in a perpetual state of chaos, it, it's so hard to live a happy, balanced life right? It's easy right now. That's why I tell people, you live in America. You need to stop bitching and crying. You have a level of security that a lot of the rest of the world can only dream. Dude, I watched these little kids in Iraq and Afghanistan. They would beg and die to have the stability that we, they did. They died to have the stability that we have. You know, you, the fact that you don't have to worry about a bomb going off in your street today is like a huge level. But if you did, if it was raining mortars on you 24 seven, you just, you're going to go to work. You're going to like, Smile. I, I doubt it. You're going to be fearing for your life completely, right? But as Tony says, life is interesting in the sense you, the law of polarity is already working against you. Not only do you need security, but you need variety too, right? So we all have to have a little something different happening in life. If life was so secure that you knew every single thing, every single minute, all the time of exactly what was going to happen, you would be completely fucking batshit crazy too. It would be like, like think about prison. You know, 23 hours a day, you're just sitting in your cell. You know, it, it sucks, right? When you have such level of security that you don't get any, there is no fun. There is no uh, spice of life, right? And that would be extremely boring and you would hate it too. Um, so you, you, need, you need security. You need to know that things are going to be relatively okay. And you need to know that things, you can relatively have some fun and do some different things. Um, you need love and you need connection, right? So you, you, you got to have some type of... Uh, you know what I mean? We're human. Like I said, it's all connected. We're all interconnected in a sense. So we all looking for some type of love or, or attention. And this could be from a dog. It could be from a cat, your plants, your animal, like anything. But all of us want a friend. All of us want to feel a bond with something or somebody. And if we had zero of that in our life, you, you're not going to feel love, right? And this could be a child, it could be your nephew, your cousin, your sister, your brother, your mother, like I said, a dog. Dude, even in Castaway, the movie where a man is on the island alone, what does he do? He makes friends with a fucking volleyball, <laughs> okay, Wilson. So it's like, dude, you're always going to want to feel some type of love or connection for something or somebody, and that's just human nature too, right? And so there's those three. And then another one is significance. We all want to feel important for something, right? anything. I'm a good mom. I was a good cook. I made so-and-so success. Anything, right? We all want something that we can look at in our life and be proud of and say, I did that. And everybody, 
as Tony will say, everybody needs something different, guys. Usually you, you got two. Usually you're surrounding by two. And if you can figure this out, I'm telling you, you figure your whole self out real fast, okay? Like my two. What do you think my two are? Anybody? Out of security, variety, love and connection, and significance, do you guys think you could guess me? If you know me very well. I need significance, obviously, right? So I'm very significance driven. I'm, I'm, I want to make an impact in the world. I want to be known for, for doing good things in the world. Like I, it's not just good enough to just do good things. Like I want to be known for that shit, right? So I, I have a very high significance drive. Um, and I have a very high variety drive. I, I hate boring. I, I, I love things to be different all the time. It's like part of my little ADHD mentality. You know, I love things to just be constantly popping. I, uh, dude, to me, it's like, take all security away. I don't give a fuck about security at all. It's so funny, right? Um, like, but other people, like my wife, for instance, is extremely security driven. She loves it. She loves to know that, hey, the rent's going to get paid. This, like, no, we, like, I know I got control over my environment. I'm not, no fucking crazy shit's about to happen. The, you're not, you know, she doesn't like surprises. She likes to know that things are going to operate relatively smooth, you know, and, and predictable. And so, um, we all have different ones. We all have different ones. Some people are more love and connection driven, you know, where they got to have somebody there for them, you know, and, and, and appreciation for somebody or something. That connection is, is life for them. Um, and it's not, not one is better or worse than the other. Like I said, this is just human nature. We all need a little bit of all four, but there's two of them that we all out here like living for, you know? So this is not to say I don't love love and connection, as you guys can tell, but I'd be fine by myself too. Like if nobody ever fucking fuck with me again, it's like, it's whatever, you know? I got my little crew. I'm going to be cool. You know, like the idea of like other people, it, it just is not as a heavy weight as, as others have that. So those are four, but those are all about you. Right? And I said there's six human basic needs. But those four are smack. You need to figure these four out for yourself. Come out here, grind on something. Write a book. Be, play your sport. Draw. Um, be the best at your job. Right? Do something to have that level of significance in your life. Right? And then, like I said, find the love, find the connection, satisfy these needs. But once those are complete... And you're like, oh, I got all my security and variety. I got a million dollars in the bank. I can do anything I want. I never have to worry about paying my bills or anything going fucking south for me again. I got all, I got a beautiful wife and kids and all this. Like you're, you're hitting 10 out of 10 on all four. Do you think you're going to be satisfied? Probably not. Oh man, Ben, appreciate you, bro. I love you too, man. I miss you. Think about you all the time. Um, probably not, right? Because it's going to get old. You're going to, in the end, it's like, what's life about if it's only about you, right? You are this little infinitesimal speck on, on the screen. And I know that it feels from your perspective, because like we talked about, you're stuck in your own perspective. So you feel like life is all about you. It, it is you. It, it, but when you look at the reality of the situation in the universe, you're this, you're like this little itty bitty speck of dust in time. It's like, it, it, I mean, you're here today and you're gone tomorrow. It's, it's so infinitesimal. It, it scares people, right? Most people are so terrified of that fact that you're really just this little drop of water in the ocean. And so it's like you try and make this whole thing about you and, and you're going to come up short and unfulfilled because it's so much more about the whole thing than it is just about your little itty bitty speck of it. You know, um, like I said, every piece, every little drop of water makes the ocean, sure. But when you look out, you don't see a little drop of water. You see the fucking ocean and it's massive and it goes on forever. And that is the, the you know, the essence of it. It's about, if you make it about yourself, you're going to get disappointed because when you go, um, it's like you're afraid of death, right? A lot of people I see are afraid of death um, because it's all about you. You know, you're only caring about yourself and your life. Uh, but what about your legacy? Like, how is your life, like, think past yourself. And if, if you spent your life um, living for beyond yourself, right? Like, I want to le leave a level of impact on this planet that outlives me. You know, I want to change things for people and help people in a way that goes on for generations and generations past me. And this is what brings me to my, my fifth and sixth point. 
if you really want to live a life that's fulfilling, right? And, and something you can look back and just say, wow, you know, like this was worth it. I came to this planet for a reason. You know, I became a human for a reason, not just to satisfy all my own selfish wants and desires, but to make an impact or contribute to the world in some way. The last two are growth and contribution. I don't care if you get to the highest mountain, like we talked about, you know, I mean, climb Mount Everest when you, I've done it plenty of times. How come Michael Jordan kept winning championships? People are like, dude, aren't you kind of done? Like you already won five. No, no, because it's not about what I've done. It's the growth. It's the life is a journey. It's a process. You never get there. You're never perfect. You've never gotten as deep and connected in your relationship as you possibly can. You've never learned all the things you can learn in life. You've never trained and developed your body to the, to the best shape that it can be in. There's always another level. It's just like the universe. It's just like the universe. If you look up today from Earth, what do you find? The solar system. And if you look up from the solar system, what do you find? The galaxy. And if you look up from the galaxy, what do you find? The universe. And then the multiverse. And then the constant, infinite space time. Right? Go other way down. And it's like, what do you see underneath? Oh, I see a molecule. And then what do you see underneath that? An atom. And a neutron. And a proton. And a quark. And a... It goes on infinitely both ways. So the idea that you're ever going to get to the top, only people who ever want to do that are people who are un trying to satisfy themselves still, right? But once you've satisfied, like I said, once you're full, do you just give up? Do you stop hunting? Do you stop looking for water? Do you stop building tools for your tribe? Taking it back to the example we used earlier with Native Americans. No. You still got to make sure the tribe eats. You still got to make sure that there's food for tomorrow or food for others, right? And so it's not only about yourself and taking care of yourself as an individual, but taking care of the whole, taking care of your family, taking care of your community. I see so many people crying out for the black community, but I see very little people doing anything. It's like, contribute, give, right? So focused on what they're getting in the getting mentality, then give. If you see a lack, then that is an opportunity for you to contribute. If you see a hole in the universe or in the world, that's an opportunity for you to plug it and to grow and to constantly be trying to challenge yourself to move forward. You know, this is the way that we find fulfillment in life. But you notice that those last two have nothing to do with you. It's about other people. It's about giving to the world. It's about helping others. And when I look at my life, especially my life personally, I've made a lot of leaps and bounds in my life. I've, I've developed myself to a point where I'm, 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 I'm happy and that's awesome. But dude, now I'm happy every day, all the time. I wake up happy, go to sleep happy through challenges, through set, anything. And it doesn't matter. Even yesterday was a very challenging day. Did I look like I was very challenged by the day? It wasn't, right? Just because I, I mastered myself. And dude, think of how boring that would get if I was only consumed with myself. I would be bad shit. I wouldn't even know what to do. Cause like I said, it's not about money. It's not about things. I don't care about stuff. So what am I supposed to do out here with my time and my energy? Why am I even here? Am, am I only here to pay my bills? Am I only here to buy Maseratis and Lamborghinis? And, and I mean, yeah, sure that all that stuff sounds fun when you don't have any of it, but what happens when you do have it all? Then what's it about? Right? And so I look at that and I say like, I've fulfilled myself and now I have found the most joy though in life. I really only feel like I've developed myself to this point so that I could help you, so that I could help the world, so that I could give the books and the talents and the gifts. God gave you gifts. For what? For you? No, for us. To help us, to help the world. Michael Jordan was good at basketball for what? For him? For me. I needed Michael Jordan. I need Michael Jordan to be good at basketball because I need a hero. I need somebody to look up to and be like, yes, if, if fucking Michael Jordan can do it, I can do it too. You see what I'm saying? And so it's really, when you look at anybody that you're inspired by, it, it's because it's of how they make you feel. It's what they gave to you. It's the, the example they set for you or it's the whatever. And in return, you give them your money and your adoration and your fame and your whatever, right? But I laugh at this. I want to I want to I spend the last part just making this specific for the grind gang, right? For you and your your creations and stuff. Um, these are, that was the overarching principle, guys. I'm telling you, you give and you will get. You don't have to focus on the getting. The getting is automatic, right? I said it's automatic. If you give, you will get. Period. 
the law of reciprocation will ensure that you get. It will, it, will, it will ensure it. Give to me. Literally, give me something of extreme value in my life and I will help. I won't have any choice but to want to give you something in return. I just feel that. I'll be like, man, so-and-so just inspired me so much and I can't help but think of how I can help them today too. Right? That's why I don't ask for money. Dude, if I can help each one of you guys make a million dollars, do you think I'll ever want for money? Never. You guys would give me so much. I wouldn't even need it. I wouldn't. Who cares, right? Like, I don't need to make it. I'm like, if I can help every single person around me make a million, I'll be rich. I'll be more than rich. I'll be able to call up any of my friends and be like, hey, I'm in a spot. Can you help me out? <laughs> of course. Rob the planner? Dude, I wouldn't even be here if it wasn't for you. What do you need? Right at you. Right? I don't have to worry about what I'm doing and what I'm getting. I, I focus on what I'm giving. And the more I give, the more I build up a, a level of reciprocation to what I'm giving. My energy, my time, my whatever. It's whatever. It's my love, right? My patience. Um, and so today, like that's the last I want, I want you to think about. This works in so many instances. When you're frustrated, when I've reached my limits, right? I say, I'm tired. I can't do this anymore. I, anytime I started to say that, I said, I, I'm exhausted. I'm sad. I'm frustrated. I'm whatever, I realized that it's like, ah, yes, you, <laughs> it's I'm. Anytime you get into that I'm, you start moving into that ego, and that ego is always unsatisfied, always have some, and I say, all right, well, I understand, you're tired, and that's fine, um, but you still got some giving to do, or you still, you know, somebody else out here is depending on you, somebody else out in here needs you, regardless of if you are tired, or if you don't want to, you know, so many times I don't want to do the live, I'm like, I don't want to do it. But I remind myself, it's not about you, Rod. It's not about what you want. Somebody out here needs the life. <laughs> Somebody out here is going to change their whole fucking shit off of what you're about to say. And if I don't say it, then not only am I letting myself down, I'm letting them down and then ultimately letting down the entire thing. Right. And so, it, it, yeah, sure. It's scary sometimes because you don't want to, you know, you don't want the responsibility of the whole thing. But trust me, you, we all are feeling the responsibility of the whole thing. Right? It's not about the detriment because again, you're, if you're thinking, oh, well, this sucks for me that I have to take it again, you're making it about yourself. It's not about you. It's okay. You have it in you. It's just, you need to inspire yourself to give it. And the way that you do that is by not making it about you. If I made it about me, dude, I would not do any of this stuff because me on me, all I want to do is play video games. That's really all I want to do. I love League of Legends. It's the most fun. It's my... I've been around the world, I've seen the beaches, I've done the clubs and parties and all this. I've done, you know, whatever everybody gets. My thing is video games. I'm going to spend my whole life just playing fucking video games. You know what I mean? It's like, I, I, I had to give that up and say, you know, look, your life is about more than just you. It's about more than you having a good time and me just focusing. Like, my kid needs me. My family needs me. My community needs me. Um, I might not give a fuck about getting rich or having money, but I know a lot of people out here who could use it. You know, I know a lot of people out here who could use help. And if I'm only focused on myself, well, then they're going to die today because I refuse to help them. You know, and, and, and in that way, you kind of become a hero of your own story, of your own journey. By like when you see, think about that, I'm always about that hero's journey and that, that story. And the hero is it's not about them. It's about saving the world. It's about saving their wife or their daughter or, their, you know, what I mean, it's about something or somebody else external to them, but not what they're getting from them. Um, you know, try it out. I got to go. They're cutting me down on my time here. I, I really wanted to talk some more in depth about it, but we'll have to do it another time. I do appreciate all of you guys' time and the energy that you gave to me here by being here. You know, I appreciate that so much. And, and the comments, shout out my sister, much love, and uh, uh, my wifey too. Everybody in here, man, I appreciate you guys. And um, yeah, let's do it again here really soon, all right? Think about what you can give to the world today. And I tell you, the more you do that, the more you focus on what you're here to give and other people and how you can make their life better, they'll focus on how they can make your life better. <laughs> all right, love you guys, peace.